again. Uh, I thought I'd show you some recent purchases from charity shops and boot sales and so on. It's been a while since I did a video. So I'll, I'll try to whiz through these fairly quickly. Um, first one, this is Serge Gainsbourg from, I think, 1964. A strange album called Percussions, which has a mixture of Latin, African and, and Cuban influences. Uh, quite different to the stuff he's he's probably more famous for doing. Um, in my previous video, I had the found the debut album by the Kinks, and I've oddly enough now found their follow-up. So this is Kinda Kinks, the second album, and again, it's got a lot of bonus tracks, which is good. Um, that was at a boot sale, and at the same boot sale on the same stall, um, the West Coast Consortium, also known as Consortium, this is looking back the story of, and um, it's a, it's a British psychedelic band. This wraps up their recordings, I think, from 1967 to uh, 1970, and um, very interesting stuff. Now, in a charity shop near where I work, I was delighted to find this. It's um, a Richie Haven's album called Stonehenge, but it's actually signed by him himself. Um, and stranger still, with it, was this also signed. So Stonehenge and Wishing Well. Um, from 1970, I think. This is Blows Against the Empire by Paul Kantner and Jefferson Starship. This is the first time that the Starship name had been used. Obviously, this came, emerged from uh, Jefferson um, Airplane. And um, this is a kind of concept album. Uh, seen as a bit of a classic now. Some product carry on Sex Pistols. This is a uh, an anthology of spoken word pieces, bits of interviews, radio adverts, and so on. Occasionally, with um, parts of the songs mixed in. It's a very curious CD. It's a kind of um, Almost, almost documentary, but it's it's collaged together rather than presented in a straight form. So you get the band talking on the radio, you get um, various interviews and so on. Um, a lot of swearing, a lot of um, silliness, and it ends with the very famous Bill Grundy interview. Herbie Hancock. Future Shock um, from 1983. This was the album that included Rocket, which had, had been his big hit. Um, and sees him at an at a innovative video. Um, and it sees him kind of experimenting with, I suppose you could call it hip-hop, electro, that kind of thing. Grace Jones' Island Life. This is an anthology um, of her 70s, 70s and 80s work. It's patchy, I, I would say. Um, you get some of her cover versions, so she does Private Life by The Pretenders, Love is the Drug, um, Roxy Music, um, and ends with what was probably possibly her biggest hit, Slave to the Rhythm. Um highlight I would say is Pull Up to the Bumper which is a sort of pure funk track um, but overall quite patchy Morricone soundtrack to the mission I haven't seen the film but I understand it's a um, Robert De Niro Jeremy Irons film and um this is really nice, uplifting, 
um, sort of sweeping orchestral themes, really lovely music. I must try and see the film. Tiger Milk by Bell and Sebastian. Um, contrary to what the price says, it was one pound, as most of these were. So this is their debut album. Um, has possibly my favourite song by them, We Rule the School. I know John Peel was very fond of this as well. Here's an interesting one. The Teletubbies. Um, not sure how famous they are worldwide, but they were an absolute phenomenon in the 1990s for uh, in the UK. Um, emerged from a children's TV programme, four characters in bright colours, silly costumes, barely able to speak. This is their album, so it, it contains the absolute classic hit, Teletubbies Say O. The rest, I have to say, isn't as good. A lot of it is kind of incidental music with them talking and giggling and, and gurgling over the top, but um, very pleased to have it. The cover has a, a sort of 3D textured effect as well. This is um, a six track EP by Elastica, again one pound. Um, the reason I got this is because there are two tracks featuring Marky Smith of the four. So how he wrote Elastica Man and KB. Um, it's, they're very full like um, musically as, as obviously as well as vocally. Joni Mitchell and Both Sides Now. This is one of her later albums, um, which generally I'm I'm not so keen on her stuff after the 70s. This features orchestral versions of, I suppose you'd say classic jazz standards. So Stormy Weather and so on. She also does a couple of her own songs. Kate Rusby, Little Lights. This is, I think, maybe the second or third album I've heard now by Kate Rusby. I do have a bit of a problem with her because I love her voice. She has such a nice voice, just folk music, really. Um, but the music is its very bland and insipid. And after a, you hear a couple of tracks, you think, oh, that's really nice. After an album's worth, it's just soporific so best heard in very small doses I would say but yeah a lovely voice at the opposite extreme Muse Origin of Symmetry this is from 2001 um, I know Muse divide people I, I like them because they're so over the top and ludicrous really they take bits of Queen bits of Radiohead and they, they turn it up to 11 um, if you're in the mood, it's invigorating. Keris Matthews of Catatonia, um, a kind of a forgotten group now, but um, this was her first solo album, and it's it's a folk record. It's absolutely lovely. Um, unlike the Kate Rusby album, there's there's variety. The songwriting is is strong. Um, and of course there's her very distinctive voice. This, this is a hugely underrated record, I would say. Um, definitely the best thing she ever did. Carla Brunei. So she, in fact, is the former First Lady of France. This is her debut album. I've, I've not played this yet. I don't know whether it will be any good or not, but I have a weakness for... French singing. Now this is a curious thing. Um, at the boot sale again, um, I found a couple of Richard Thompson CDs, which I've not seen before. Not that one. That one as well. And 
I wondered if these were bootlegs because they have a, a slightly bootleggy look to them. In fact, frustratingly, it's two discs from a five disc box set called RT The Life and Music of Richard Thompson. So there's a lot of sort of rare live tracks, um, things from his career, folk songs, and so on. And it's packed full of material. So I'm sure it'll be a really interesting listen. I just wish I'd been able to get the full set. Um, probably if if these are great, I'll end up buying that anyway. And then finally, from the same, these these were all three, three for one pound, and this this was the third um, at the boot sale. So Robert Johnson, King of the Delta Blues singers. What can you say? An absolute iconic album. Um, these recordings were originally available as 78s. Um, recorded in two sessions in 1936 and 37. Um, kind of define blues music really. And without without this, would we, would we have had Led Zeppelin and the Stones? I don't know. Um, but yes, iconic. So that's it. Um, what I have recently been buying and enjoying from charity shops and boot sales.